Hey everybody, I'm sorry to say that this was my first stream and I totally forgot to um, start my microphone in the beginning and Kerstin could hear me over uh, her sound, that's why she didn't realize it at the beginning. But um, I will just speak over all the parts that may become confusing because you cannot hear me. So let's begin. Uh, recording now. So basically we have a small introduction that today we will show you how mole rats are created in Photoshop. And now comes the best sentence of the stream. All the techniques, no technique. <laughs> so this will probably be the title of the video. So we have a small introduction, me, Verena and Kerstin. Hello. And um, I will just talk about, uh, well, basically how long I'm going to paint which will hopefully be an hour, but... <laughs> well, we have an hour, so if you can, like, manage to stop after an hour, then it's all good. <laughs> so I can tell you right now, it's a little bit over an hour, but, um, yeah. Here I talk about uh, mole rats in general, because maybe some of you have not even seen the critters that uh, we use. And, um, yeah, so this is... A cute mole rat and I show you the nose and the teeth which are very prominent and are basically the trademark of our mole rats. Yeah and the next picture shows the body of a mole rat where I tell you that it has an elongated body, a very round face and a prominent tail. And the other picture is actually a very cute one which tells us that the eyes and ears are actually very small, but uh, we decided to make them bigger to look more comically. So here we see a small rat that I drew beforehand, which I then will draw in our distinctive uh, Duru style. So basically what I did was leave out the teeth that are underneath, because that would really creep people out. Believe me, I tried it and it looks scary. Yeah, and also in, in some of the uh, pictures you've shown, um, you can see that the teeth like kind of uh, follow the line of the jaw. So it sometimes looks like they only have like the upper teeth. So what follows now is an anatomical discussion about the teeth actually being in front of the lips and protruding out of the nose which I also didn't do because that would also <laughs> look very scary. So I decided to put the teeth behind the nose, but also, like I said, only one set yeah. of <laughs> teeth. And um, <laughs> yeah, so basically we can start. So we have a small little more red child and his body is a little bit on the thicker side. So the grown-ups are actually more elongated and for the children well I decided to make a little stubby one and now comes the interesting part where I will show you how I create the little mole rat so beforehand I am going to tell you now that <laughs> I will try to name every layer because I am very good at that and I do not forget naming every file and layer in my pictures. Layer? Yeah, like you, like you always do. I've seen your files. So I don't know what Kerstin is talking about. I am a very organized person. <laughs> no, but joking aside, uh, naming your layers is very important. A very tidy uh, uh, file? Especially if you do a lot of layers, which I tend to do, which is not very good for the performance, but I like to do a lot of layers in case I make a mistake somewhere and then I can easily change them. On the other note, watching me gesturing a whole lot is actually pretty funny and I don't know how you people don't laugh when I talk. And professionals that we are, I realize right now that the most important part for you is probably cut off, which is the tools from Photoshop, so you don't <laughs> really see what I do. I'm so sorry, guys. This is 
Mm. Um, I will try to explain my best what I'm doing right now. I'm using the Photoshop pen tool to trace the lines that I sketched beforehand. And it's easily just click and layer it. I'm a little ashamed to say that I only realized you could do that uh, for the project of Duro. It would have helped so much to know that beforehand. Yeah, you can basically follow your original sketch outline. And then you can just fill in the shape that you just created. I always use gray colors in the beginning. So that's the thing that we learned in university, just sketch out everything in gray scale and afterwards put in the color. Okay, maybe, maybe it's also worth mentioning, we have like a little delay. So basically I live uh, 20 seconds in the past when it comes to Rena's drawing. <laughs> So the nice thing about the pen tool <laughs> is that after you created a vector mask, you can still change the shape, which helps if you see, for example, right now that the head on the body like that in the pointy way is not very nice. So you can just change it afterwards. And it's a really nice tool to find different kinds of shapes, which um, is basically the mole rat characters. They are all different sizes and shapes and I basically just tried myself out with the pen tool until I found a shape that I liked. For example, right now we have a small little peanut, which is very nice for a small young mole red. So the way a character is created in Duro is on two ways. One, if I don't have any background story, I just draw whatever I like. But uh, for all the mole rats in the game already, Castine had a lot of background info. And from that, I could characterize the mole rats, for example, if they had jewelry or something. Yeah. Also, maybe it's interesting to mention that it's like a, it's not just a one way approach. So some things that Rina adds to the character or how she draws it, um, also influence uh, how I will write uh, the story bit for this character. So it's like this uh, yeah, two-way two road of inspiration, if you will. So continuing with the pen tool, I just draw the extremities and they are a tad darker, but also in a gray tone. And to make it easier for myself, because the extremities are always the same, I just copy paste them behind the body for the front arm, for example, and here the back arm. And the same thing is going to happen with the legs. Right now, it's like a gray peanut with two gray bananas. That could actually also be a very nice title for this video. So here, the very professional me is asking myself if the sound and the pictures are actually synchronized because Cassian has a slight delay. So you realize that it is my first stream. Uh. Our, our audio is synchronized, only I have the delay because I have to watch you uh, through the stream. Um, that would have been a great time to realize yeah. that the audio is actually not working, but oh well. Yeah, no, no, that's just, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you're like right now you're working in gray values, but I saw you had already colors picked. Kerstin asked a very good question. So we already have color scheme for the mole rats, which is actually just a very light brown and a darker brown, and also a couple of highlights color, like the, the violet and rose colors. And I just put them beside me so I can always grab them. Mm-hmm. Do they all have the same uh, like base colors? Actually, they do. I always use those color palettes, but depending on the gray scale that they have beneath or the gray color they have beneath, they look quite different. 
because I use the blending mode color on there and um, that depends mm -hmm. on the grayscale. So working with a blend mode color takes a little bit of practice because oh. the color will not look like the normal color. It will change uh, ah, depending okay. on the hue or the, the grayscale. So okay. it, it's a work in progress and trying out which color and which gray tone fits the eye actually. To come up with a character of the Mora, it took a little while. I had the sketches of Cassian to work on, and um, then I was supposed to put on my my own style on it. And it took a little time, but in the end, we were very. <laughs> well, they didn't look like that in my mind. In my mind, they looked great and amazing and cute. And then my hand did something, and <laughs> yeah, we 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 got the result of that. <laughs> So in the next minute, um, I will be realizing that the eyedropper tool is not working correctly. Yeah, for, for those who, who didn't see it, um, I found a picture yesterday of one of my uh, notebooks when I started um, thinking about Jural and how things will be. And... Uh, I, I knew that I wanted to work with Verena because I value her art style and also I know she's like she can be crazy productive uh, when she's like uh, has a picture of what she wants and uh, also I know she likes animals and I like animals too <laughs> so I basically pitched her the idea for Duro with uh, the words hey can you draw this in cute. <laughs> So that's basically true. I just got a WhatsApp message with a picture okay. of one of her scribbles and she asked, can you draw that? Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here I tell her that I have a problem. Uh, do you have, sometimes it has like these options that you get like the uh, difference of a color and stuff like this? Or is that it like has the, like the mean of all the colors around it? Well, basically, Photoshop just realized that it is our first stream and we need to look very professional and it decided to not work correctly, so. Oh, it's, hmm. If, if you change, if, if you pick a color with, uh, like, on the right side, does it keep it? After realizing the eyedropper tool just doesn't work, I decided to restart Photoshop, which I will not show right now. I will just blend over the video. <laughs> Well, turning it off and on again helped. Yeah, it's always the answer, always. It is actually very good representation of how I work because Photoshop tends to just shut down. You're a gremlin, yes. Because, <laughs> um, I don't know, t technical stuff and me just don't match. So everything breaks or won't work. And the most frustrating part is that Cassie comes over and she does the exact same things that I do. <laughs> <laughs> and it just starts working. And that's what's really frustrating. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like the uh, like the opposite of the effect. If you want to show something off to someone and then for some reason it stops working, I get that. And you basically get the opposite. You want to show that something isn't working. <laughs> that's why we're such a good team. Yeah. <laughs> So back to the drawing, right now I'm doing the eyebrows and I will tell you that the eyebrows are very important for the animation part. Of course, the animals mm. don't really have one, but um, like you see my hand gestures, the animations are, the motions are easier to animate with eyebrows. And the eyebrows I'm doing right now are pretty thick for a child. But the eyebrows of the first mole rats were very thin and you couldn't actually see them that well. Yeah. So from now on, I decided to make very prominent eyebrows for all the characters. It needs an eye. Yeah, so basically okay. all it's left are the nose and teeth. 
and the I. And there are things that are always the same at the mole rats, with the mole rats, so the, that are the nose and teeth, which I just tend to copy paste. And the eyes are also pretty similar. So for the sake of this stream, I'm just building them so you can see how I build them, but it's actually for the future uh, mole rats, I just copy paste old noses and then just change the size or the shortness of the teeth. So it also depends on the character, if the nose is big or small, or if it has long teeth or short stubby teeth. And um, the interesting part is also where the eye is located. That also makes a lot mm -hmm. of character for the mole rats. And apparently I'm very concentrated that the teeth look correct because they are very important. Do, do we have a mole rat with a tooth gap? It's so cute for one of the little, little people mole rats. So this is actually a very nice example how working together on one thing and just letting someone see your work creates new ideas. So if I would have worked on alone, I would have just stuck with my teeth, uh, my, my normal teeth, and suddenly Cassian just blurts out a new idea and a new characteristic is taking place. So that is actually a great thing working in the same bureau and just letting them look onto your pictures. And I miss that. During Corona, we couldn't really work in our normal office. And what you see now is just actually testing and searching for the best tooth gap you have. <laughs> and um, yeah, you don't know if the things that come in your head look good, so you have to try it out. <laughs> I, I really don't know what you mean. <laughs> Maybe if it's like a little bit open just at, at the bottom. I mean, I, I again, I can only see what, what's happening 20 seconds after you did it. Ah, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, that won't work. So I decided to just leave it like they were before. And um, I'm sorry to say again that Photoshop and Skype shouldn't be online parallel because if you want to you want to combine two layers and you press Control E and that closes the Skype window. So let's make a little cut here. So Skype wouldn't uh, show casting, Discord neither, so we just... Yeah, but, but on the stream we see you, we see Photoshop. Right, we just try to go on. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Like nothing happened. I mean, it's, it's really about like the cute two-scap more that's now on the screen again. And also on the side note, if you've got Photoshop and Skype open and then press Control E, even if Skype is closed, that shortcut will not work anymore. So afterwards I realized what really only helps in that case if the shortcuts don't work, for me at least, was to <laughs> totally restart my computer. Oh, but, but the recording is still on, yes? I mean, I see that the stream is on, but the recording, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So after finally letting go of the control E dilemma, um, I'm moving on to the eyes. And this is where the magic of animation actually happens, at least for me, because as soon as there's the iris, then you can already have a little fun with 
your animation, even if you are not animating it, just in Photoshop tool. And he can see. Right, so now he actually looks like a character and you, I you can... I suppose pupil always look... Right, you can already uh, have a little fun with him mm. animating or imagining him animated. And as soon as you have eyes and the muzzle, you can give him different kinds of characteristics by just trying out the different sizes, for example, or positions where um, the eyes are. For example, when it was smaller, he looked more grown up, so we put it back to a little bit bigger, the eyes, that is. And now we have a mole rat with all its body parts, uh, each of them being on a different layer. And because of that, you can just add shadows and colors and different kinds of textures by masking them onto each layer. And that is a very nice thing that Photoshop now can do. So you don't have to mask everything out, out by hand, but just put it onto the next layer. So for the shadows, I always use the layer style multiply. So you don't have to have that dark kind of gray, but whatever you put onto it will also shine through. And I use a multiple, um, multiple way of, of tools. I use a brush to form the shadow and then I use the smudge tool to um, make a little bit softer. And uh, I use different kinds of uh, brushes, which you can also fi already find in Photoshop. So I'm not only using the soft round or the hard round brushes. Um, I think you have some trouble with your microphone. You're sometimes cutting off a bit. Yeah, and the reason for that is um, because I don't have a headset, as you can see. I only use the great microphone of my laptop. <laughs> and um, that's not uh, very good. But it's worse if you forget to record your own sound. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I don't know how, uh, how from, from which source the stream takes your mic and if it's like better, if it's direct. So we, we'll see. It's uh, like streaming is fairly new to us. <laughs> so we, we, we try our best and we learn. <laughs> you don't have to jinx it now. <laughs> so while we banter on, um, I am drawing a lighter belly. Every one of our mole rats has a small belly oh, wait a second. with different kinds of fur on them. And here ends my telltale journey because we are realizing right now that the sound is missing from the stream. Oh, uh, Verena? And we will blend over so you don't have to see my me? struggle. Okay. Um, can you go please to the OBS? Because uh, your voice isn't. Okay, now you're on the stream. Yeah, okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> well, I just saw the time, and I don't know if we can. <laughs> finish this but we, I, I'll, I'm trying so um, I hope now you can hear me again so I don't know when the voice cut off I'm sorry about that um, every mole rat of ours has a lighter belly so it also has a little bit of fur 
and I always use um, some highlights in white and also some darker brown ones. And yeah, so I just make a little furry belly there. And um, what I forgot right now is actually some highlights. So Yeah, he looks sick right now, but um, it'll get better. Are you right now using one of your own brushes? Um, no. Right now I'm actually using the brushes from Photoshop that you can download. It's like the ah, okay. brushes. And um, my brushes that I made myself are actually used more for the backgrounds oh, okay. and the roots and stuff and not really for the fur, I realize. Um, And actually, like every professional, I sometimes just have to try out things. So right now I'm just looking what looks best. And I would say it's the linear light. So I'll just paint it like this. And um, yeah, that's the image. Look. And we already forgot to name every layer, so that's good. Um, yeah, so basically um, for the following steps, because the I don't know if I will finish in time, um, are pretty similar. Mostly I actually just copy paste the, the, um, the layers I have here onto every other one and then I just move them around because doing everything over and over again would make you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it all, it's also faster to just copy um, No, it's not supposed to be gray. Yeah, so it's basically faster if you just copy all the layers over and over again if there's no difference to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, maybe casting can say some of the. Um, what makes a difference between the mole rats, like... Huh. Oh, yeah, you, you mean the spots? Um, not only the spots, but like uh, for Olabisi, she's one of our happier ones. She has, for example, she, um, she has a necklace made of flowers and stuff. So how oh. do we come up with all those different kinds of characteristics and how do we show them in... Um, yeah, I, I really love Ola BC. You made her so cute and so happy. And uh, yeah, I am I have to see what uh, comes out of her story. And if people like it, I hope so. Um, with Simone Red's uh, design, um, basically what uh, Verena showed you some of the Morad pictures, and the Morads we uh, picked are the Maraland Morads, and they have these cute little uh, spots somewhere on their body, and that is what makes them different to other Morads. So basically, Verena always has a placement of these uh, light spots somewhere. Um, oh, yeah, I think she's doing it right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, uh, 
regarding their characteristics. Uh, they get like jewelry that's also influenced by um, uh, the uh, African tribes that we shape the world after, or it, that the world is inspired by. Um, and also like some, yeah, some, some special things, like we have, we have a, a Morad that's like essentially a punk. <laughs> and he is like, um, I don't know, he has uh, some sort of piercing with a, like with a little chain on it. Yeah. Um, and also a hat. And uh, another one, like he has a, uh, he has a punk arrow. Huh? Yeah, he has an arrow made out of. A oh, okay. I interpreted it as like some kind of hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and uh, then we have other Morads that like to decorate themselves with necklaces, and that makes it also easier for for players to um, differentiate. Uh, between them and yeah, it gives them a little bit more of a personality. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Sorry, just right now I'm actually I, I drew a white spot for the um what was related here. I, I drew a light spot where the certain spot may appear, but I use um this. Basically it's from a picture of an African wall decoration where they have different kinds of um, baskets where they weaved. And so I just basically really roughly cut that out and then I'm using it to um, make the fur a little bit more unique. So I could basically make um, a brush out of that Maybe I should mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> thing, but uh, <laughs> right now I'm always using the same picture. And you can put them where you want as well. So basically sometimes I try to make um, hair out of them. If, for example, Ulabisi has a small braid, so just put them besides. Or they become actually some kind of jacket. So they are very multifunctional just for you to play around with a whole Morad look, actually. So I, I like it very much. It's a very nice thing that these Morads have to make them unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be the body. And now you continue that for all the other stuff. So I don't know how long we should do it. Maybe I will this I mean, I think we can go a bit longer because we had the technical issues yeah. in between. And the beginning. And... Yeah, and then maybe um, if uh, we finish this little guy now, or maybe uh, you give him the finishing touches later, then we can next time show you how you animate him. Yeah, that's right. Um, because that is also very interesting, and that's why I'm doing it these and this layered way mm -hmm. so it's easier later on to animate and use each limb for animation so yeah um. when you design uh, the morads uh, like we have the the adult morads basically and then the little guys is is there like a difference how you design them is it like a different thinking process? Um, not really. I basically use the well animation rule about grown-ups and small children. So uh, yeah, grown-ups and children. So they the children will basically get um, larger eyes and smaller limbs and just make them look cute. Mm -hmm. And the grown-ups. Um, will get elongated bodies and will just seem more grown up. So I basically use the human proportions onto the animals. And uh, so your, your, your baby are like three heads. Isn't there like a rule for how many heads should be? Uh... Yeah, right. That's it's sometimes a little bit difficult because 
sometimes you don't see the neck, so you don't know where the head ends. But um, yeah, basically you have typical like three heads from the height, and mm -hmm. um, and it also depends on the story. So if someone has a hardship, then you can I don't know make make the um, Ah, oh, God, sorry. Um, make it darker under the eyes, for example, just so him show oh, yeah, yeah. sleeping. And so it depends really on the characteristics, more of them of them being grown ups or, or children. But that's why it's easier for me to know more about the mole red I'm designing. Yeah. Yeah. But um Yeah, basically kids look cute and grown-ups have are allowed to look dumb sometimes <laughs> they have more baggage you mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean you have uh with the children uh or like the what what's a little more red called oh um or a little red what, what's like, like a baby mole rat? I don't know. Sometimes baby mole rat. <laughs> sometimes animals are yeah, just wait. baby animals. So yeah. So like uh, we have one of the baby mole rats that is uh, uh, that also has like her her own troubles and she doesn't know how to fit in and she's perceived as somewhat aggressive. Uh, and uh, I, I I really like her a lot. She's basically the best friend of Olabisi. <laughs> And they have two very polar opposite uh, characters. Um, so yeah, so also like the children aren't like just cute and happy go lucky. Uh, they also have like their, their little and big problems. Also, from what I gather, like uh, Sandra is in the stream, and he's giving us a bit feedback. Uh, we we need to find you another microphone. <laughs> is what I take from from her feedback. Okay. Um, well, I'm using the the laptop's microphone, so. Ah, okay. There's probably a lot of other noises when I'm on the laptop. Then. But... I think it's it's the opposite. It's like it's. Uh, like you cut off sometimes too early and you're apparently you're um quieter I'm quieter yeah hmm. like the volume is, is lower on your uh your voice than on mine That's but we will we, we figure it out <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out maybe i can just get a headset yeah take it from the other room It's uh, it's it's a learning process. Yeah. I mean, basically, I don't want the people to hear me mumbling about. Um... Yeah, but if they don't hear you at all, they can. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it might sound quite weird if I'm here talking to somebody who's not answering. Oh boy. Well, I mean, we're here for two weeks, so I could actually just make it happen <laughs> if this this one's not really that great. So we'll see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think for you, it's also the first time you see my progress. Do you have any questions? You realize, like, this is how she works. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I I see stages of your progress. Uh like I know you you first do like the the forms of the body. Um especially like the ones from the the uh the baby morets are really adorable. Um so there was one that basically was just a little peanut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Alabisi came out of that one. <laughs> Yeah, she's a happy little peanut <laughs> with some flowers thrown on top of her. Uh, 
Yeah, and I think it's for me it's interesting how you uh, uh, like play around with the Photoshop effects. Mm. Oh no! Now you disassembled his arm. What? Oh, actually, do I? I know the uh, the adult Morrets. They have like like two. Their arm is made out of two parts. No. It's it's not with him? No. It's always one okay. arm, but through the bone animation, it looks like you can move just one part of the arm. Oh, OK. Or was that a question? Yeah, that basically was a question of, like, it, it, with, with the others I saw, it looks like they have separate uh, things for their arms. Um, like separate layers. Did that, but then if you just um, pull them apart, they don't look smooth anymore. Because then just one of this will be cut off. But oh, okay, yeah. the mesh animation, where you weigh every point to the bone, it still looks like just just this part will move. So uh, okay, it's a nicer animation. It depends for, if you want like the puppet animation that we did. Then during our studies, of course, then every the forearm and the back arm are separate parts, and then you just move mm -hmm. them. But um, through mesh animation, which we can do in Unity, it's not necessary anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, Sandra, uh, haven't seen your process. <laughs> and she asks, did you use a brush for the little stripes too uh, as a stamp, or do you make them all individual? Uh, the fur here? Yeah, the little dark and white stripes. Um, those are brushes by Zedic. Uh, let me show you. So you can, there are different kinds of artists that um, make their own brushes like I do, and then they just lo load it up, upload it. So this is mm -hmm. the, the brush pack uh, by Zedic, which I love to use because it's a very nice grizzly brush, and then you also have um, brush effects and stuff. So the brushes that I made myself like I said, are usually just for the backgrounds. Like I can show you, they are here. So I can't really use them for the fur. Yeah, okay. That was before uh, I knew how to make brushes myself when I decided to, uh, when I drew the first Morret. So maybe I can make some fur brushes, but. <laughs> It's a lot of um, trying out, and I don't know if we've got the time right now <laughs> to try out stuff again. Yeah, <laughs> not right now, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I saw how you made some of your brushes for, for the environment. Like, uh, you, I know you were like in the office at our, uh, like at the, the table we usually use for prototyping, and you were there cutting up vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then you put them in ink. <laughs> I uh, basically cut up vegetables and just inked them and pushed them on the paper and then scanned it and made brushes out of it. So I don't know what I'm doing right now. Yeah. But basically, sounds sad but this is actually it how i work it's a lot of repetition <laughs> um, <laughs> from the same color but sometimes for each and every limb to make a little bit of difference so it's always something new Ugh. 
And sometimes when I try to work fast, I make mistakes and then I'm angry at myself and start to be angry at the computer because the computer is always at fault and not me. And I don't... <laughs> of course, always. <laughs> it's, it's always the computer's fault. It's never mine. But... <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, we still have two weeks. Maybe I can. Um, yeah, then you'll be like a pro art streamer. Animation. Uh, how to um, draw a mole rat. It's like, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I see your uh, progress, like, again, uh, 20 seconds in, uh, in, the, in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. You always start with a gray color, and then uh, it turns into brown. Yeah. It's, it's a layer effect? Um, no, I just put on a new layer with the color. And, oh, okay. And you can basically just tell that layer to only mask onto the one before. So. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's basically you put a mask around the brown layer. So if I put it away, you can see all the mush that's going on mm -hmm. right now. I don't know if you see it. Or well, I see it in, in 20 seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds, <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, you have a lot of mush going around, and it would be pretty um, tiresome to draw everything onto the, the legs. So, you can just actually press Alt and then put everything onto one layer. And oh, okay. the one layer that is filled will be. Um, yeah. Also, also for me, this is like uh, Photoshop magic because I, for the longest time, used just Photoshop. I think CS three. It was basically the last one before they changed to their subscription model. <laughs> and I, for the longest time, I refused to sign up to that. So this is all like, yeah, new stuff. <laughs> Uh, Andrus, I hope that's the way to pronounce this. If not, I'm very sorry. Ask which program you're using. Um, it's Photoshop. If he wants to know the edition, I think it's CC. Oh, it's not 2020 yet? Like Photoshop 2020? I mean, where I see it. <laughs> it, it is actually the newest one, I think. Oh, okay, then it might be already 2020. Oh, no. Oh, God, no, I'm opening the internet. I'm sorry. No, that's the wrong one. Um, I will look into it. It just, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it Oh yeah, it's basically Photoshop 2020. Yes, it's Adobe Photoshop 2020. <laughs> I know my programs. I, I... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, now that I also use like the, the subscription thingy, uh, it's fairly easy to lose track of which version they're on because yeah. they just... Yeah. They automatically... Uh, And then uh, there's the photo. Also, is this, is this like your work uniform? <laughs> I can see the stress is oh. printed on your on your <laughs> chest. Yeah, we're always in stress. Um, <laughs> well, basically, being a game designer, you can wear whatever you want, which is a very nice thing. And you can, no one cares, actually. So I basically always walk around and comic t-shirts. So I'm a grown up. <laughs> I, I, I can wear stripes when I want. Yeah, I can wear whatever I want. 
Um, but yeah, st stress, that's what we have been feeling <laughs> since we started our Kickstarter campaign. I think already beforehand, but uh, Kickstarter really stressed me out at least because it's always... Yeah. I mean, right now it's like, uh, uh, like me personally, I, I at some point I overcame it and I don't know when it happened mm -hmm. because it's going on for quite a while. And I think it would be very exhausting to stress out about it all the time. Yeah. I don't know where to take the time for it. I mean, I'm not stressing out, it's just, I think, I'm always like, why don't they like us? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, that's that's. But that's uh... not about the Kickstarter campaign. It's more about when some of the posts that I did or something just there's like one or two likes, or they're not seen at all because Twitter has a funny algorithm and not showing it, and then I just say why. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's a riddle. Social media, also marketing. Yeah. But I I saw that there were some nice talks uh, here about it, so uh, hope we can can still learn something. Yeah, it would be great. Oh, so if you're interested in our experience, like the current and previous with uh, Kickstarter and maybe our future one. Um, we will have a stream about it on uh, Thursday. Yes, on Thursday, uh, probably at 11, um, where we will uh, yeah, share a bit of our experience of what we did so far, um, what we think helped and didn't help us. And if you're here, uh, you can ask also some questions. Um, or give some feedback or comments uh, on what your previous experience were. Sorry, I don't understand why. Um... Oh. Okay. Uh, you, you, you. Um voice broke off again uh yeah because i stopped talking again i was like I, okay <laughs> i always begin a sentence and realize oh that would be stupid to say that because it's not true and then um, <laughs> i just break off and then when people okay. say well, no 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 finish and then i finish the sentence they said that that's stupid i was like yeah that's why i stopped talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay it's 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 kind of hard to tell with yeah, uh, really people talking i'm sorry Again. Okay. Um, there is a jinx in this one, I guess, because I can't choose the color again. But um, I think I will find out what the whole problem is, and yeah, I, maybe. I mean, we still have a next week, so I guess we um, have a lot of live streaming that we can do. For example. Yes creating your own brushes. I don't know. Maybe we can ask the our fans or our um, supporters what they would like to hear. Actually. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can also try and make this like a fairly regular thing. Yeah. That would be um, and we can then ask on our Discord maybe about it. Yeah. Which I will link. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you have like some comments or question about the uh, stream and Verena's progress, um, or Moretz, or 
whatever you want to talk about. Um, we are part of a Discord server that is uh, uh, that hosts basically indie games. Um, so it's not only Duru and Twisted Ramble that's on there, but uh, some others as well. So if you're curious about indie games and looking for a nice community, uh, maybe you want to join us there and check out all the uh, games on there. And yeah, maybe give us a little bit of input or feedback about yeah, streaming, what you want to see. Right now it's like, it's basically like the prototyping phase of a game where you not quite settled on, uh, like not hard set on uh, all the mechanics and what you want to do with it. And so we collect some feedback and can see uh, what you're interested in. So basically, the more red is finished right now. What I am doing right now is just doing some extra um, like eyelids, just so you can um, play with the emotions of him. So he's now he's very tired and just wants me to stop talking probably because <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but basically that's how um, I create a Morad, and it's actually quite nice to see that the base part only takes an hour or so, a little bit over an hour, um, and then you can use the other time to make it a little bit more finer and makes shadows and necklaces and stuff that makes the more red unique but the base is, is actually finished right now so ha nice nice okay and yeah uh, thanks for joining us yeah thank you very much and um, sorry again for all the streaming <laughs> trouble that we had it's like i said it's my first time and um uh, it, it yeah. will not me be my last, so I will become. Yeah, we will, we will in front of the camera. <laughs> get better <laughs> with this. Yes. So um, thank you, everybody, yeah. and uh, still have fun at the DevCon. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.